All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. From the ashes a fire shall be woken. A light from the shadows shall spring. Renewed shall be blade that was broken. The crownless again shall be king. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are going to look at how Peter Jackson's films changed the character of Aragorn in the process of adapting him from the books to the films, but in my mind, they still got the underlying themes of the character right. Many of you guys liked my video on how the films got Faramir wrong, so I wanted to talk about this topic in a similar way, but also explain why Aragorn's case is different, at least in my opinion. There are also some related articles and videos that are in the description and cards, so please check those out. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Of course, from the outset, I should mention that there were many small changes, especially in Aragorn's actions from the books to the movies, like him beheading the mouth of Sauron and so forth. But really what this video is going to be focused on are the bigger, more thematic characterization changes. Let's begin with the fact that, indeed, the Aragorn presented in Peter Jackson's movies is different from the one we get in the books. While both are grim but honorable men, great warriors, the Aragorn that is found in the books is even more grim and hardy, and is said to in fact be the hardiest of living men. The Aragorn from the books is one of the best warriors in Middle-earth, having magic of sorts, and is such because he has been working towards his kingdom and reuniting the kingdoms of Arnor and Gondor since he was in his early 20s, being in his late 80s by the time of the main events of The Lord of the Rings. Much of his power, which is more emphasized in the books, comes from his lineage as well, going all the way back to Amaya, Melian. Aragorn's failure or success concerning his quest to reunite the kingdoms of Arnor and Gondor as their High King is tied to his love of Arwen, for Elrond said that his daughter shall not marry one who is less than the king of both. Aragorn is filled with contention of fate and the dire need to accomplish what he is last in the line of descendants to do, and that is to be king and defeat the shadow that destroyed the kingdom of Numenor. Even before and concurrent with the story of Frodo and the Ring, which are catalysts in Aragorn's tale as well, he was already on the path of his own quest. Now the movie's version of Aragorn seems less connected to fate, and more in line with just surviving in the moment, in the wild, as a ranger with skills. He joins the Fellowship because he cares for the quest against Sauron, and he is a friend of Gandalf, and he cares for the hobbits. But it seems that he did not do it for the sake of his own kingdom or claim, as he had in fact turned away from such things as he had never wanted them. It is not so much that the book version of Aragorn wanted these things, but he accepted that his fate was thus by the time of the main events of the Fellowship of the Ring. But movie Aragorn comes to accept that fate throughout the course of the movies, and we see that happen on screen rather than before the events of the films. We see him come to accept his fate and his destiny, from scene to scene, but especially in particular moments. We see this best exemplified in the case of Andriel, in the book, Aragorn carries the shards of Narsil with him, and the sword is reforged into Andril at Rivendell before the company departed for the quest. Now in the movie, Elrond has the sword reforged and he brings it to Aragorn during the muster of the Rohirrim. Rather than hearing about Aragorn's past and seeing his current actions that bring him to the throne, as we do in the book, we see Aragorn come to terms with his destiny going from hardy ranger to glorious king within the movies. In many ways, this makes the Aragorn that we see in the movies much more of a protagonist-like figure than we see in the books. As the book version seems to be a culmination and fruition of all his plot that came before and during the main events of The Lord of the Rings, versus the movie version where much of the important character-changing moments happen on screen before us, masterfully depicting the show-don't-tell rule in movie making. And it's for these reasons that I actually enjoy both versions of the character equally for their places in their respective narratives. Both versions have the agency and character befitting of their respective story arcs, and honestly, I don't prefer one over the other. I think they're both incredible, as both in movies and books, Aragorn is my favorite character of all time. As indeed, both versions get the theme of the character of Aragorn right, in my opinion. Aragorn is not a selfish character in either version, 
Rather, he is a just and virtuous man, of a lineage nearly lost to the world, who resembles an elf lord at times, wise with lore, valiant in battle, and a healer of wounds, a true king akin to the greatest of his fathers of old. In my mind, both characterizations are pretty much perfect for the worlds in which they were set. And again, the books and movies go about depicting all of this in different ways, but they do both depict all of it nonetheless. And I should say that, in the movies, the casting of Viggo Mortensen was absolutely impeccable, and I cannot think of anyone else who could better play the role, being Peter Jackson's version of the character or otherwise. But there is no denying that this character is different from books to movies, and it seems to me that it's to do just as much with the telling of the character by itself, as well as it is the framing of the story at large and the agency of the characters generally within. The world in the books is indeed larger and more dynamic than the world in the movies, and the character of Aragorn reflects that pretty well. In the books, whether the ring reappeared or not during his lifetime, Aragorn was well on his way to attempting to become king and remake Gondor and Arnor, as it was his destiny set out for him from a young age, and this was the fate given to him if he was to ever indeed marry Arwen as Arwen had made her choice to stay and be engaged to him decades before the main events of The Lord of the Rings. His agency in the books was already on a path towards that destiny, and with the re-emergence of the ring, the bane of his ancestor Isildur, and the culmination of many other things in the world, not the least being the need for the Fellowship to travel south and pass near or through Gondor, and he with them, the destiny of Aragorn was well underway regardless of the main plot with Frodo, or so it seems to me. But again, like I said before, Frodo's plot, along with that of the Ring and many others, acted as catalysts which also drove Aragorn's plot to its conclusion. I should also mention that book Aragorn is much more of a mythological hero than his movie Aragorn, as the book version has moments of the character acting very grim or dreadfully great, as one burdened with a great destiny or doom such as his moment in Edoras when he threatens the life of any other but the heir of Elendil who draws forth the sword of Elendil. This isn't something we typically see of heroes these days in modern stories, a hero who would threaten the lives of any other for just drawing his sword, but again, he's much more of a mythological hero within the books than in perhaps other adaptations. Many people, myself included, are actually somewhat thrown off by that moment in the book. Yet it is a moment not of the modern sort of hero, at least not generally, but of a great hero out of myth and legend, of whose destiny and implements are typically beyond the modern understanding of common language and courtesy. This isn't the one we get on screen, really. We get one that is more subtle and likable to a general modern audience, and an audience less versed in the archetypes and agencies of characters from the myths and legends that inspired Tolkien, that he wrote his own characters to be akin to. Aragorn is less concerned with his own destiny in the movies, and he's more caring about lending his aid wherever he can, in whatever capacity, becoming a king over time. Yet I still do not doubt for a moment that Aragorn in the books, who is burdened with great purpose, would not hesitate to give up all of that to aid his friends and the ring bearer. In that way, a timeless virtue of Aragorn, present in both books and movies, is that he lives by some strict moral codes, no matter the context, situation, or cost. And in both books and movies, Aragorn lived by that code, whether he was a central focus of the narrative at given points in time or not. In many ways, that true selfless code, whether in his mythological book form or his more modern movie version, was at least part if not a great deal of the heart of the character, which stayed true in the adaptations of the films. And that is what made him a great warrior, a great leader of men, a great king, and a healer of wounds, to try to do what was right, what was good for his friends and the West and the free peoples at large, no matter what it took. In both versions, we see Boromir's words from the movie come to pass about Aragorn, as he is a brother to many, a captain to many others, and a king to all. While there is surely much more discussion to be had about this character, both in books and movies, I believe these to be the main reasons that while, yes, Aragorn changed in the movie adaptation from the books, he maintained the underlying virtue and true greatness of the character. 
Both versions mirror Bilbo's poem about Aragorn, which I read at the beginning of this video. As we see the character go from Ranger and the Prancing Pony to the king of both Arnor and Gondor. But still, we see the character evolve in different ways, in the books versus the movies. But what do you all think? Do you agree with my assessment? Is there more to discuss? Please feel free to check out the resources and conversations that are also linked in the related articles section of the description for more info and ideas on this topic as well. And so we come to the end of our tale on how the films changed Aragorn, but stayed true to the character all the same. From the character of Aragorn, in both versions, we see that we must endeavor to become hardy and powerful, yet humble, gentle, and compassionate, that we may use our strengths in the service of others, and in the service of a greater good. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these changes of the character of Aragorn from the books to the movies, and let me know if you agree with my assessment on the virtue of the character remaining in the adaptation. I've honestly pondered this question for a while. Which version of the character do I prefer, or if I do at all? And honestly, I really like both versions equally for the worlds and situations they are in respectively. If you would like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles through the link in the description below, and please check out our merch and Patreon. I am also starting a new partnership with Castle Khan, so if you'd like to support the channel and purchase some Lord of the Rings swords, statues, and other replicas for a discounted price and with international shipping, please check out Castle Khan through the link in the description, and please use the code WEST. Castle Khan sent me Aomer's Spear to inspect, and I must say it is really high quality. I think you all will quite enjoy what you get there. Thanks to our Valor 2 patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scout and Merton, John Hume, Sam B, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Anthony Harmon, Dorwin Gray, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswald Project, and Robert Bogue. Thank you so much to all of our YouTube members and patrons. The support means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. And I'll see you all again next Sunday with a video on the love story of Galadriel and Celeborn for our Valentine's Day video. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.